Hey, it's me, TB, and today I'm going to be doing my stats for 2019. Uh, I use a, use, a, use a spreadsheet created by Portal in the Page, I think. I'll link their channel down below, as well as like the link to their 2020 version of the, of the spreadsheet. I know people use whatever spreadsheet they want, but I use their spreadsheet because it just looks very, very, very put together and I'm lazy as fuck. So there you go. I'm gonna like have everything on my phone right here. So I'm like, I'll off to the side. So hopefully I have like enough room to like put in the graphs so you can like see the shit. So I'm talking about it, hopefully. So yeah, let's get started. So in 2019, I only started reading seriously until like July. So that's why the first few months are like gonna be very like sporadic. So books for months. I read four books in March, two books in April, two books in May, two books in July, eight books in August, 12 books in September, 2022 books in October, eight in November, and 11 in December. Which you can definitely tell when I started doing booktube stuff more, more often because the online books I read skyrocketed, really. So as for pages per month, in March I read 884 pages, in April I read 679 pages, in May I read 626 pages, in July I read 359 pages, in August I read 2006 pages, in September I read 3989 pages, in October I read 4387 pages, in November I read 2917 pages, in December I read 3,560 pages. So October was both the month with the most books in it as well as the most pages read by a at least 400 pages in about 10 books, which makes sense. For my genre breakdown, I'm not going to go into deep it up with all the genres because a lot of them were just like, I read one book in this genre. So it's like a little part of the circle graph, pie graph, whatever it's called, who knows. So overall, I read 14 Fantasy, which was 21% of the books I read, 15 graphic novels, which is 23% of the books I read, 3 books in fiction, which, what does that mean? No idea, but I put it down for 3 books, which is 5%, or in literary fiction, which is 6%, non in thriller or mystery, which is 14%, and 6 books in sci-fi, which is 9%, which again, I it pretty well because I read like 12 manga volumes in like one month, which is October, which is why it's so high. So yeah, it makes sense about that number would be so high, yeah. As for format, I read 44 paperbacks, which is 62%, 20 ebooks, which is 28%, 7 hardbacks, which is 10%, and that should be everything. I read, I don't do audiobooks because I don't have like the attention span for it because I just zone out immediately. So yeah, most of those ebooks were ARCs, I think. So yeah, as for my star ratings, I always say that I go very easy when it comes to star ratings because one, I just, I'm very easy to please when it comes to books, books more, more often than not, so I'm not gonna like be too harsh. Secondly, I don't have like a real system for it, I'm just, I'm just like, did I love this? Did I like it? It was okay. Meh. Well, I just hated it, especially in like my star ratings summarized. So I have one one star, which was 1984, shocker. Then I had two two star, which no idea what those were, not gonna lie. Oh, I know, one of them was Shadow, Shadow, Shadow and Bone. Don't know, I have no idea, what, no idea what the other one was. I had 14 3 star, 21 4 star, and 33 5 star, which is about how I felt my year went. I liked more books than I didn't like. And like, when it comes to reading manga, I just kind of give it 5 stars all the time anyway, because it's like, like a chunk of a story, not a full story, and like, I usually like them all anyway. Like, I have no real complaints about it, so it's by default great, because I just, I liked it and I wanted to continue in the series, so obviously the manga deserves five stars, in my opinion. Now for my age range, that's age range or like age category, stats, whatever you want to call it. I read 50, 50 adult book, which is 70%, 17 YA, which is 24%, and 4 kid lit, which is 6%. When it comes to kid lit, I count like middle grade stuff. When it comes to adult stuff, I just basically count anything that isn't explicitly YA, like I count literary fiction more often than not, I count a lot of like classics because like well they're not really YA like guess they're adults because that's the audience they were in intended for like um like when I read um and then there were none I put it down as adult because like it's not really a YA book or a kid lit book so I just put it down, down, down as adult so it's the adult category is so high now for page length I read 23 books with 199 pages 16 books between 229 to 199 pages 22 books between 300 to 399 pages. This is a tongue twister, my god. 
seven books between 400 to 499 pages, one book between 500 and 599 pages, and one book between 600 and 699 pages, which was impulse. So I mean, kind of, kind of cheating, but okay, whatever. My ears published stats is like really cool. I really like them. I want to try and like do this exact pattern more often. So I read four books that were published before 1920, two books published in the 1930s, one book published in the 1940s, one book published in the 1950s, one book published in the 1960s, two in the 70s, two in the 80s, three in the 90s, three from 00 to 05, 616 from 2006 to 2000, 2000 from, okay, the 16 books from 2006 to 2010, 10 books from 2011 to 2015, and six books from six, six books from 2016 to 2018, and 20 from 2019. Which I think the way the spreadsheet does math, I might be counting my arcs towards that. I don't think I read that many books published in 2019. Might totally be wrong, but I don't think I read that many. So I might just be counting any year bigger than 2018 under that, which would make sense. As for my author gender vision thing, uh, 38 were female, which is 54%, and then 30, 33 were male, which is 46%. So that's pretty equal, and I would like to keep that going in the future, like, as equal as I can get it. Now for author nationality, um, I read 40 books from the U.S., which is 57%, 8 from, eight, eight from the U.K., which is 11%, 12 from Japan, which is 17%, which is at manga volumes I read, so... Six from Canada, which is 9%, two from Russia, which is 3%, one from Germany, which is 1%, one from Australia, which is 1%, and I read one book that was from Trinidad and Tobago, which is also 1%. That was Crit Crack Monkey by Merle Hodges, which I don't think it counted, put it up in the graph thing for whatever reason. I don't think I edited that statistic properly. Oopsie. Now, as for the race division, oh, 46 of the authors that I read were white, which is 663%. Then 26 were people of color, which is 37%, which is pretty good for not actively trying to read that diversely. I would like to raise the people of color statistic to like closer to 15 50. Like, I feel like 50 40, like how my male female was separated. But I just want to rise, raise the people of color percentage, percentage that I'm reading, which so I'm doing pretty good in it because the three books that I've read in 2020 have all been by non white men. So. We're going pretty good, I guess. Um, here, I can also do my Goodreads stats, even though they're going to be basically the same, but still, it's going to be fun. Um, I'm going to do like a screen record thing. I mean, I might. I don't know. Okay, so my 319 year in books, I read 19,425 pages across 74 books. So my short shortest book was Last Years, which was 112 pages by Amora Sacker. Not proud, not proud, saying it right, but I have no idea how to pronounce it, so my bad. I'm trash, I know. The longest book was Impulse by Alan Hopkins, which was 666 pages. The average length I have books I read was 262 pages, which is weird, but okay. The most popular book I read was 1984, which 4 million people also read, which, wow. How I'm so sorry people had, people had to, like, suffer through that. That was, it should have been, like, the worst book they read all year, I'm pretty sure. And then, at least popular was my textbook for my, uh, I think it's my history class I read, which zero people also read. Yes, I count my textbooks on my Goodreads because if I had to read that shit every fucking week, it's gonna count. Like, I was reading, like, 300 pages every week just for those, my just, my, just with my textbooks. So yeah, it's gonna fucking count, okay? My average rating, my average rating was, was 4.1, which I go really easy, so no surprise. And my highest rated, good, my, the highest rated on Goodreads that I read was Villa, Villa by Desire by Kian Troberson, which I don't think it deserves because for me it was like a three star because of like pacing issues, but okay. My first review was with Crit Crack Monkey, which was before I started doing like more like longer reviews as you can tell. But yeah, I really like really the book a lot. It was short, I liked it. Here's my 2019 year in books. You can tell exactly when I started Booktube. With like, uh, I think Rainer's Rainer's on my Indian name was the first figure right for booktube. So yeah. Just go through this, I guess, like. You're gonna look out to say, you're just strolling, really. <laughs> you 
Now, my last, review, my last review was for a picture of Dorian Gray, and yeah, that's it for my Goodreads review, year in review thing. So I think that's all my 2019 stats, I hope. So yeah, thank you for watching, watching, watching. If you like this video, like it, subscribe, share it. Um, yeah.